What's up? <laughs> What's up, Cody? Feeling good, brother. So did you happen to see what happened right before your fight? I, I caught a glimpse of it, you know, it was pretty impressive. So it gave me a little inspiration, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so that's obviously the first time in UFC history there's been two slam knockouts on the same card. Uh, so how's it feel to be a, a part of the UFC history? Feels awesome. I think I have one of the top comebacks, too. So this one definitely feels better than that. But uh, <laughs> it feels good. So what was your, your confidence level coming into this fight, knowing you're, you're fighting a guy, you know, who's from Texas, he walks out with the big crowd pops, got the cowboy hat on and all that stuff? Uh, you know, I was joking with uh, my coaches. I feel like sometimes if, sometimes I feel like if I fought in Denver, I'd, I'd still get booed, which is where I'm from, uh, just because of how my fights have gone. So, uh, you know, the, the crowd beyond his side didn't really matter much, but he was an undefeated prospect, big favorite coming into the fight. And... You know, I've had some of my ups and downs. That's part of growing up in the UFC. Uh, I told Zach that after the fight. You know, he's 6-0. and I got in the UFC when I was 6-1. and And it was, you know, I just told him, you're going to have ups and downs. You're, you're fighting the best guys in the world. And um, it's, it takes a minute to find your stride and find your confidence. And, and I feel like I'm starting to find it. Um, but like I said, it's tough when you grow up in the UFC. So confidence maybe wasn't the highest. But like I said in there, you need people that believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. And I got a great group of guys that, that always have my back and, and always think that, I could be the best in the world, so uh, I'm, I'm lucky for that. Yeah. So how much of, you know, how much help did you get from them? Because, you know, you had the three losses in a row, and then you come out and you get the illegal elbow. Like, what was your mentality going, like, through that whole stretch? Um, I think for this camp, we just, it, it wasn't a physical thing, right? Like, I have all the tools in the world. I, I have great wrestling. I have really good striking. I'm athletic. All those things are, I check all the boxes. I think it was just, like, having a little bit more intention, um, with, with what I was doing in terms of like being a little more patient. You know, I would get in there and it was almost like a frantic pace. And I, sometimes I'd put people away and sometimes I'd, I'd just put myself in bad positions. And I feel like you saw that tonight. You know, you saw it in, in, in when I heard him in the exchange with, with the right hand and, and I was patient. I didn't, I didn't uh, put myself in a bad spot trying, trying to rush something that wasn't there. And, and that's probably the thing I'm most proud of. And I feel like something I can build on. That patience, like I did notice that because it seemed like you were very poised in there. Like how do you... I guess, how do you work on that in the training room? Uh, it, it's crazy because I feel like in, in the training room, it, it's, it's different than the fight, right? Like uh, the danger factor is not there as much. And so it's easier to be patient because you don't have the stress of like, man, I want to get out of here. Like I want to finish this dude and get home to my friends and family and just have this thing be over. And I think part of it was something my coach said before I walked out. He said, you just need five seconds of courage. And then after that five seconds is up, you just need to reset and have another five seconds of courage and continue that process for as long as it takes. And then it makes it easy to be patient because I can do five seconds of courage. I might not be able to go in there and do 15 minutes, but I can do five seconds. And then I can reset and I can do another five seconds. And so, um, you know, and, that, and he said that to me. And then I have another teammate, Dustin Jacoby. He kind of just reiterated the same team, the same thing. Just get back to your anchor points, man. Don't, don't lose yourself in there. Let the fight come to you and, and do it on your terms. And I feel like I was able to do that tonight. This year, your record reads two and two, right? Very busy year. Um, how do you find time to, I guess, prepare for each individual opponent? Or do you even worry about, you know, who's standing opposite of the cage where you, when you got these quick turnarounds? Yeah, I'm not really worried about the guy standing in front of me right now. Um, I think eventually that is something you, you deal with, right? Like there's little things obviously you can do to prepare for people, but if I'm on my A game, there's not a dude that I'm gonna fight right now that I can't go in there and finish. And I know that. Um, so really it's just nose to the grindstone. I'm, I'm a workhorse, I, I always show up. Uh, I didn't take any damage this fight. I'm going to try to be back for Dustin. He's fighting December 16th. You know, I'm a guy I feel like people can count on because I'm always going to show up and I love to work. It's my favorite place to be um, in the gym because I feel like, you know, it's, it's something I choose to do. It's something I get to do. Um, and whether it's hard or not, there's, there's things that like people can't choose to do it. Some people don't have the luxury to get to do that. And so I feel blessed that I get to. And so I try to take advantage of that. So we're looking at four more in 2024? <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe just spread out a little bit more, right? I told Coach before this fight, I said, man, I, I'm going to go smash this dude, and then I'm going to take a little break, but now I won, so you'll probably see me back in January. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, for me, like I said earlier, you know, being a piece of UFC, UFC history, that's got to be worth the bonus, right? Man, I hope so. It's Christmas time. I got, I got two little girls, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to give them everything I ever had growing up and more, so, uh, you know, I know the, the bonuses are few and far between, but if I could get one, that would, that would be pretty awesome, yeah. And uh, like my man said, he talked about, you know, he, you had the three consecutive losses, that illegal uh, shot, and then now you finally got that big win. Do you feel like this was the perfect way to win a fight to kind of close that chapter, close the, you know, the last five fights and kind of turn over a new page and go over uh, to something new? 
Yeah, for sure. But that chapter is not closed, and I want to fight Jacob Malkoon again, so we can run that fight whenever. And then uh, my next one for you, uh, I, obviously with uh, the, ho the holidays are around, I know you were probably weren't able to enjoy them like you were. Are you going to be able to do that now, especially after a win? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to be enjoying them, but, you know, work's not done. We got Chris Gutierrez next week, Anthony Smith, two of my teammates, two of my good friends, and, and that's a big week for us, co-main and main for Factory X. And then that's just going to lead right into December 16th when Dustin Jacoby you know, he goes, gets a finish, and, and Brandon Revival brings home the first belt to Factory X. It's going to be a great month for us. We're going to close the year strong, and I'm just happy that I got to start it. You guys good? Thank you.